Hey guys, John here, and I'm joined by legendary game designer Suda51, who you'll know for No More Heroes and Killer7 and the upcoming Travis Strikes Again. Uh, so it's great to meet you, Suda. Hi. <laughs> um, first question um, How did uh, uh, Travis Strikes Again end up being a Switch exclusive? So, uh, as you know, the No More Heroes series uh, you know, started on the Wii, and it's pretty much like a standout title uh, among its catalog. And he's always felt that the No More Heroes series fits really well with Nintendo hardware. So back when uh, Nintendo showed him the NX before it became the Switch, um, he, he was really interested in you know, the, the Joy-Con and the other Switch features and just thought, you know, if I'm going to bring No More Heroes back, I really want to do it on the Switch. So um, usually your team's a bit larger, but you started Travis Strikes again with a much smaller team. Uh, it was like an indie-sized team. Um, was your relationship any different with Nintendo? Like, was it was it different to um, when you approached them with No More Heroes to begin with? So yeah, back uh, with No More Heroes one, uh, he, he feels like when they first pitched it, they're a team of about twenty to thirty people. So they are definitely smaller now. But you know, now uh, Nintendo is really supporting indies a lot, and there's a lot of indie games out on the platform. And uh, Suicide himself used to be indie, so it was kind of like an, a good opportunity to go back to his roots. He, he wanted to go back to that, you know, small scale group where he could, you know, talk to everyone face to face uh, in person. And Nintendo really supported that. And they also supported his idea to make a spin off um, from the No More Heroes uh, series, a, a compact new IP. Um, they were behind him 100% all the way. So, um, Travis Strikes Again takes place within the, um, the Phantom game system. Um, can you tackle those games in any order, or is it, does it progress in a linear fashion? Yes, yeah, so there is a set order in which uh, Travis will go through the game worlds within the Death Drive. Um, but to, in order to unlock each game, he first has to collect the Death Ball that contains the game. And in order to do that, he, um, he, there will be a separate adventure mode. And these will be a series of six parts, uh, six different text adventures titled Travis Strikes Back instead of Travis Strikes Again, which will chronicle his quest for each Death Ball. Okay, that's great. Um, so one of my favorite games ever is Snatcher. And um, I, I was reading up, and you did a, um, a radio adaptation, a prequel to mm -hmm. Snatcher. Um, and obviously, you had to work with Hideo Kojima for that. Um, and you've also worked with Shinji Mikami on multiple games. Um, who's been your favorite person to collaborate with? <laughs> yeah, so um, you know, it's, it's, it's not fair, and it's kind of hard to really pick <laughs> one person out of the people he's collaborated <laughs> with. So, and uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, working with uh, Kojima on Sudatcher was a very short Thing and it wasn't a game. Whereas with uh, Mikami, he, he worked with him on Killer7 as well as Shadows of the Damned, probably in total for about five years altogether. And he learned so much uh, over that time, it was very valuable for him. They would, you know, go overseas together and just, they worked together a lot on, in many different ways. And now he looks back on that period as just like a treasure. So we mentioned Killer7 there. Uh, Killer7 released on Steam last year. Are you happy with the performance of that port? Like, do, do you think it performed well sales-wise and um, does it live up to your original vision? So I know you're not very happy with the PlayStation 2 version uh, of Killer7. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, as many people know, the original version of Killer7 was, came out on GameCube. And the, the PS2 uh, port, they, they, they cut out some things, changed some things, um, and the load times were long, so it really was kind of a, a step away from what, what their original vision for the game was. Um, compared to that, you know, the, P the PC version is a very, very close recreation, and he's very satisfied uh, with his performance. Uh, he thinks that uh, the developers from Engine Software who worked on the game did a fantastic job. That's great. Um, would you consider porting Killer7 to any other platforms like the Switch? Switch, Switch, no, 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 Killer7 Of course. Yeah, so, you know, of course, he wants to put it out as many platforms as possible. The, the thing is getting the okay from Capcom, mm -hmm. because you know, they have to okay everything that, that goes by. So he's thinking about uh, how, to, how to do that, and perhaps this year he's going to go and talk to them. So the last No More Heroes game um, was around eight or nine years ago now. Um, have you considered bringing the past two No More Heroes games to a Switch? And um, do you think fans who didn't play those games will still be able to jump into Travis Strikes again without uh, needing to know the backstory. So yeah, um, regarding the, the, port, the Switch ports of 1 and 2, he definitely wants to put them out. Uh, one of the things is that uh, the IP is currently shared between Grasshopper and Marvelous at a 90% split. Mm -hmm. So um, they're still in talks about you know, how to make that happen. 
he had that very thought on his mind um, when playing the game. And that's precisely why he did make it a numbered uh, installment. Um, because this time Travis isn't fighting against assassins. He's going into a game world, so it's like a brand new adventure, which, which makes it pretty much its own IP. So he gave it its own name, Travis Strikes Again. So he's hoping that that sort of um, concept will allow people to just jump right in and not have to worry about knowing everything that happened before. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Travis Strikes Again, there are a lot of indie collaborations. There's a, Travis wears a lot of indie shirts. Um, were, were any indie developers very eager to work with you on that? Or um, did, you, did you go and approach them all one by one? Uh, um, it was actually mostly um, Sudasan himself going up to uh, people and talking to them, uh, mostly at PAX and EGX, uh, just make, you know, making friends with the developers, and they were all very you know, enthusiastic about uh, working with him. Uh, there was also some uh, which Nintendo reached out to, and he's, al uh, he's also very close friends with the people at Devolver, so you know, they, were all, they were always eager to help as well. Did a, um, did a lot of inspiration for Travis Strikes Again come from that indie developer group? Because obviously um, this game is very different to the first two games in the series. Um, so did you take some inspiration from some indie games to get to this premise? Yeah, it, uh, it wouldn't be you know, going too far to say that it's pretty much all inspired by the indie scene. Uh, he looks at the indie scene today and it's, he finds it really fascinating how there are so many people making so many creative games based on old you know, Japanese games but they take you know, those elements and kind of like retranslate them for the modern era. And so it doesn't really feel like an old game, even though it has those, that retro feel to it. And um, seeing all that made him really want to do his own rendition on that, um, based on you know, the strange, weird, unique games that he played as a kid that really had an impact on him. So that's basically the soul of TSA. So in the debut trailer for Travis Strikes Again, Travis is playing Hotline Miami. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do any other indie games have a larger role than just the shirts, or is, is it just uh, small cameos like shirts? Um, so at first, uh, he really was considering doing a much deeper collaboration with multiple games, even going as far as to make some stages within TSA based on uh, indie games. But then he realized that you know, doing that would require double and triple checks to make sure everything is you know, true to the original, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that the original developers check off on everything. And there was just absolutely no time for such a you know, lengthy cycle. So unfortunately, um, he just had to keep it at t-shirts. Uh, the only exception, however, is Hotline Miami. He did you know, want to do something special for that game. And there's, the collaboration is actually even deeper than what you see in the trailer. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dennis from Denton actually made that art on the t-shirt, oh, wow. <laughs> just specifically for him. And that, that, that rendition of Travis, that Hala Miami style character, will come in the game. Oh, that's, that's very yeah, exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a very Hala Miami situation. So this is the first No More Heroes game with co-op. So you can play this multiplayer with other people. And uh, Badman is the second player. Um, does he have the same kind of character development as Travis, or is he m just sort of along for the ride? Um, so yeah. Uh, Bad, bad men will experience some growth, just like Travis will in the game. Uh, he doesn't want to spoil the details of that, uh -huh. you know. But um, he also wanted to do a separate adventure mode just for Batman, separate from Travis's. Um, and he's hoping to work that into the season pass somehow. So yeah, um, in the trailer you see Batman rushes into Travis's trailer and attacks him. And he really wanted to get, you know, to the bottom of the why there, like um, Batman's motivation, what was he doing before it? He got, he f found Travis, and what is he doing after? You know, why does he really want to try to bring uh, his daughter back to life? Oh, so I was going to ask about the season pass. Um, so it's been announced, and Nintendo are also doing a retail version, which includes the season pass. Um, but what, what does it actually entail? What, what, what are you getting with the season pass? Or is that still being worked on with you guys? Right, so they finished working on the main game, which means they're now uh, busy working on this, the DLC for the season pass. And he doesn't want to spoil the details, but um, he's very confident that No More Heroes fans will be pleased with what's contained. Um, certain characters, even certain stages that they will recognize will be there, so um, everyone has a good right to be excited for it. And just like how um, Zelda had two season passes, he's uh, interested in doing the same thing with this game. You know, learning from the best, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so obviously uh, Nintendo delayed Super Smash Bros. Ultimate because of No More Heroes. They just delayed to get, get rid of the um, the time frame. <laughs> but let's say they added Travis to Smash. Um, what would his final Smash be? It would definitely, be, it would definitely be a pro wrestling 
ジャーマンスープレックスが一番いいかな。Probably a German yeah. suplex. Yeah. <laughs> You've worked in a few different moves there, but the, fi- the final finishing touch would have to be a suplex. I don't know. Beam cut the boom. He's going to show up with the beam cut <laughs> and grab onto him. He really wants to you know, sit down with Sakurai and just like, give him a long like, the explanation of how this will all work. <laughs> cool. Throw up the, the you know, he'll, he'll do the moves himself, throwing up the beam cut <laughs> and sliding in, just so Sakurai knows exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Smash has a wrestler now with Incineroar, the Pokemon. Um, who would win in a fight between Incineroar and Travis? Yeah, of course, Travis. Of course. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. He might not be able to beat Pikachu, but... I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. After all, Pikachu can't even be a detective, so who knows what he's capable of. Very true. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. He just saw the trailer and was surprised to see that Ryan Reynolds is. But he, he hopes that Travis will at least be able to beat the Ryan Reynolds version of Pikachu. I'm sure he would. So, is there anything that you've learned in the development of Travis Strikes Again that you would apply to a sequel to No More Heroes? So, if you made No More Heroes 3, would there be anything from this game that you would put into that? Yeah, so the truth is, he's actually been working on an outline for No More Heroes 3. He was working on it on the plane flight over here. <laughs> and he's dead set on making it, of course. Um, you know, if TSA is a success, that will greatly increase the chances of it coming out. Um, but what, you know, if and when it does, um, Travis will be up against adversaries this time that are way crazier than any of the assassins he's faced. It's going to be so intense, like, you know, he's talking like people from out of this world, like aliens, just like crazy people. Um, kind of like, you know, like, like Thanos level. <laughs> crazy. So, um, in order to be able to stand up to them, Travis needs to power up and strengthen himself. So, in that way, you know, TSA is, is deeply connected to the overall series. This is kind of like, you know, his chance to get some new abilities and power up. So, um, in TSA, uh, Travis has this death glove tool that allows him to collect skills and use them within the games like force, you know, Star Wars force type mm-hmm. abilities. But um, the plan is, you know, that Travis will take that death bluff with him out from the game world, take that with him to No More Heroes 3, which is going to be his, you know, trump card against the crazy Thanos style aliens he fights. Travis is evil. He's worried that he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's revealing too much. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Um, so Travis Strikes Again has some motion controls. Um, how do they work in handheld mode? Do you just shake the entire switch, or um, or is there a button that you can use instead? Yeah, so you can you can shake the whole, the entire switch uh, while in handheld mode. But since he felt like some people might have a hard time doing that, he made an option so that you can just wiggle one of the analog sticks to recharge as well. So you know the, the entire game is built so that you actually never have to shake it at all if you don't want to. So before we get to the final question, I actually got to play Travis Strikes again with Suda51, and while watching the introduction cutscene, he had a very interesting comment about some of the changes made from the debut trailer. So um, I'll let Suda explain for himself, because some of you will be really happy about this. Uh, one of the big changes is that the, in the previous version, um, the, the voice actor for Travis was not the original voice actor, but in the official release, the, the original voice actor when we were advising as well. Uh, he, he saw the, the voice actor's tweet, like tweeting about how disappointed he was that he couldn't <laughs> do the role, so he decided to contact him and make sure he had yeah. it. It was just before summer vacation when they did the recording, and they, you know they're really busy, but they still made time to make sure it got done right. All right, editing John is going away, and let's get back to the interview. Um, so, final question. What, what's your favorite Nintendo Switch game? Not necessarily, um, cause this, this is your first Switch game um, on the <laughs> system, but just from any publisher, what's your favorite? Yeah, I'm all Zelda. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, he's not trying to brag or anything, but uh, the seeds, the, the coral seeds, uh-huh. yeah. um, he, he collected all 900 of them. Oh wow, very yeah. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not trying to brag. He's just did what you know, any natural player would do in that game. Of course. <laughs> you know, what a proper Zelda fan would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me, Suda. It's been oh, really thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Right, thanks everyone, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for a lot more on No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again, and on Things Gaming too. Until next time, bye.